but my first question of this one is how you can uh, find the right uh, the right estimate for this work. Well, as always, you find uh, the uh, all the relevant works of the same year, of the same size, of the same um, provenance. You know, you, you put everything in in hierarchy, and you try to find a um, a place where you think it's it's the correct level at this time of global appetite for a certain period of Picasso. Yeah, but um, we know that none of them are the same. We know, but we absolutely know. I mean, it's 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 not an easy it's not an easy uh, uh, science, as you know. Pricing is always complicated. Uh, I I actually, as I was preparing for this call, I was remembering that you and I had dinner in a very serendipity way the night of the Brody Picasso when the Brody Picasso was sold. So if you want the uh, uh, the the real master of of uh, and still the record price for thirty two. Uh, so I guess you start from the eponymous, you start from the most relevant, and then you create a series of reflections about uh, what is going to matter uh, to uh, the current buyers in the market um, about this particular picture. What is relevant about the particular picture that we're talking now about? And I think that the most important um, element is going to certainly be the date. There is at the moment a sort of um, snobism, a sort of like obsession with 1932. I don't know if you uh, agree, Judith, but I, I feel that, you know, it's it's quite, you know, everybody is looking for that. Uh, there is the added um, element of the um, exhibition, the exhibition at uh, the Musée Picasso that then came to Tate, had a great resonance and people are starting to be very um, cognizant about what was exhibited there. They, they, they viewed it, they saw it either in Paris or London and they, they got very, uh, very enthusiastic about the sequencing of these wonderful pictures, one close to the other on the walls. Um, and they are quite obsessive about not only 1932, but the show. Um, so there is that plus. Uh, and finally, um, the size. I think that, you know, uh, you know, beyond the date and the, and the subject, which is very cogent at the moment because everybody wants Marie-Thérèse, everybody wants 1932, it's a monumental picture. It's an epic picture. It's big. Um, and I don't necessarily always agree with it because I'm not a very tall person, but size matters. <laughs> <laughs> Proportion matter. <laughs> yes. But um, also there's something about the composition, right? Yes, I mean, there is something about the, um, the fact that um, Marie-Thérèse is not passive that I think is catching the attention of a lot of people. Um, and I think in uh, particularly now, a very active... Um, what is it not, why do you say not passive? I have to look again. Yeah, she's, she's awake to begin with. She's not okay. dreaming, she's not sleeping. She's she's um, quite vigilant. She's present. I mean, in her that's bedroom. That's the catalogue of uh, of the exhibition. <laughs> that's the catalogue of the exhibition, and I saw it in both places actually. Uh, so as you can see, she's got um, she's um, she's awake, uh, and she's got a very proud stance on the chair. She's very you know she's very alert. Whereas sometimes, as you know, particularly in 1932 and particularly, particularly in the painting of 1932, the defining painting, Le Rêve, she is very much sleeping. And there is a whole connection with uh, the fact that uh, it's, um, it's almost a surrealist picture. Le Rêve, dreaming, uh, subconscious, desire, uh, all that was so much part of the um, very particular way of Picasso a very particular homage of Picasso. But to Le Rêve is extremely sexy. This is less uh, attractive, right, than Le Rêve. If you, if we, if we mm, make a hierarchy in the well, I think she's she's attracting in a different way. And if if you think about you know the 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 the, the audience now, I think in a certain sense uh, with uh, a lot of uh, emphasis on gender parity and everything, the fact that Marie Thérèse is awake and important and has a almost almost 
very aware sense of self will be will be talking to a lot of people. Yeah, but come on, relevant. if we speak of gender parity, we don't buy any Picasso who was an absolute <laughs> monster. He Not was for a while. Yes, he was with Olga, he was with Marie Therese, he was with Dora in those years, uh, a, a bit later with Dora, but that's a nightmare in terms of uh, gender equality. Well, in, ter in terms of his biography, yes, but I, what I want to say is that uh, this is quite a tri-dimensional representation of a woman. But okay, it's less sexual, right? Uh, I think it's less sexualized, yes. She's fully clothed, uh, but that adds another layer, which I like, which is color. It's incredibly colorful. It's very chromatically powerful, which is also relevant to a lot of potential buyers. Um, and that is, is with the size and uh, the, the, the presence of this very strong turquoise, which is unusual, and I like it very much, green, uh, blue, um, the, uh, the yellow, of course, but the red, um, these are very strong primary colors that have a pride of place in this, uh, in this series in general, but in this one particularly. So I think that there are um, aspects of this picture that are really, uh, are really attractive and will play their part in, in the success. Uh, I read in the catalog that uh... At this time, what, where it was shown at Musée Picasso, it belonged to a, a foundation in Vaduz. Uh, it um, belonged to a foundation in Vaduz. I can't tell you much more. You know, it's uh, still, it's um, still it's, a foundation. It, it's written. Earth like yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. I, I know very well how it's presented in the catalog. Uh, I can tell you. I can confirm to you that the buyer at the Sotheby's sale is. Um, selling it in in uh, now with us so there is continuity between the between um that purchase and now okay so what 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 to be clear what's written in the catalog is still the same owner correct okay and and so how can we describe the market of uh, picasso more generally well Since i think it's 10 years it's, the evolution you want you want to know how it evolved between in the last 10 years yes well i think it's one of the most global markets that we have now um in in in, in absolute terms uh it's a very strong iconic brand it's a brand market um i think that one of the examples is definitely the fact that um you probably followed this um Two weeks ago, we had uh, the sale in London. There was another Marie Therese, which was actually very dreamy. Uh, it also 1932, a smaller picture mm. um, that you know, you certainly know what I'm, I'm talking about. And you you know also that it's been purchased by the uh, underbidder of the NFT. I mean, to me, this... Uh, really? Me. No, yeah. I didn't know that. No, he's a Chinese guy. Oh, okay. The underbidder, Justin sorry. Soon. Uh, who has come out as the uh, the buyer of the Marie Therese, uh, and uh, he? Uh, it's a beautiful story. It's I think it's a narrative that tells you a lot how you know it's it's a it's a, it's a market that is driving generational change. I mean, there are a lot of people from. So he was the underbidder of the NFT. Uh, correct. Record price of the Beeple. Yes. Okay. So he underbid the people and then he contacted our department in, uh, um, in China to know if there were more NFTs. Uh, uh, and our Chinese uh, colleagues who are, you know, very smart and, and, and alert, they said, well, we don't have at the moment any other NFTs, but we have a fantastic sale in London and look at what we have. And he immediately was attracted to Picasso. And that tells you a lot about the power of the um, of the artist at the moment. It's it's a name that um, is immediately recognizable. It's a market that is. Uh, it